What is going on, everyone? It is Mike. Welcome back to Network Podcast. I am so excited to have you back here because we have got a lot of stuff to talk about today. So we have in the news just a lot of announcements from Apple over the past two weeks since we talked last. But first, I want to talk about my co-host, Holden. How are we doing today? Hi. My name is Holden DePardo. How's it going? Holden, glad to see you back here today. Thanks for joining me. It's been a, you know, we have talked for two weeks, Thanksgiving, happy, again, happy Thanksgiving, but we have a lot of product announcements and a lot of things to go through in terms of Apple news. Uh, I guess let's just get started. What do you think? A surprising number of things for the month of December. Yeah. Like December to remember. That's, that's what I like lot. to call it. Uh, so I think first is yesterday. So two, oh, yesterday was Tuesday, right? Uh, Tuesday, yeah. Apple announced the new AirPods Max, which kind of a strange name, but we'll get into that here. This is a set of $550 headphones that are available uh, on next week, Monday, when, when they come out. If you're able to, if you were already able to order them, however, if you were not able to order them at the time of listing this, it's probably about 12 to 14 weeks is what they're estimating for those new AirPods, uh, sorry, the AirPods Max to come out. Now, do you think that's price or do you think that's actually supply? Like, oh, I think that's... Sorry. Like they didn't make enough of them. I mean, I, I worded that terribly. Do you think they didn't didn't make a lot of them because of the price? Or do you think there's actually a huge supply and there's a huge demand for them? I think that there was problems. Like, like what I would, what would stick out to me is that somewhere they had made some type of change in the product itself. And that product necessitated changing the components that were in there. And then that's what why you have yeah. supply shortages. So it's a... It's oh, a yeah. It's kind of a, uh, a double-edged sword where you have, a, uh, you know, you have product changes which uh, lead to supply chain shortages, which also lead to, or and, and customers just want it because for whatever reason they want that product. Uh, but that's why twelve to fourteen weeks. It's almost like when you and I, when we bought our uh, our watch bands, right? Remember, it was like it took forever to find them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So maybe they made a last-minute change. It was actually one of the um, one Mark of the people German that said something about this. Yeah, Mark Gurman, and it was also uh, John Prosser who said that there were some changes that were made uh, very, very close to uh, the announcement that had to lead to changes in the product. So, I mean, mm -hmm. who knows? But at $550, I am very surprised that there are this many people, or at least presumably based on the wait time, this many people mm -hmm. that are buying it. I was fortunate enough to order mine and get it on uh, Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. But uh, at least that's what they're telling me right now. For but for five hundred and fifty bucks, I mean, wh where do you think like this kind of sits? You have the AirPods, the AirPods Pro, and then you have the AirPods Max. It's kind of a steep, you know, the, the step up yeah. curve. It's it's kind of steep. What do you think? It's like less than a hundred dollar difference between AirPods and AirPods Pro, and then mm -hmm. basically double the price for the the more than double the price price for the Max. Um, initial thoughts, I'd say, first of all, the, the, I think the name is kind of horrible. Um, there was a rumor it was going to be called AirPod Studio, and I think that's mm -hmm. a much better name. I think it's likely that they named it Max to kind of a better uh, consistency with the nomenclature across the product line, like you know, mm -hmm. iPad or sorry, like uh, iPhone Pro Max, for example. Um, but yeah, it's it's a, it's a weird name. But overall without having listened to them or held them or anything like that, it looks really, really nice. They look what you would expect from Apple in terms of a premium set of over your headphones. But man, is that price a, you know, a huge pill to swallow. I will get some eventually at some point, but probably not anytime soon. Since I just got my AirPods Pro this year, I'll I'll be holding off for a little bit, but I'm definitely intrigued by it. It looks like a really fantastic pair of headphones. I prefer over ear headphones to in ear headphones. The reason I use the AirPod Pro all the time though is because they're just so convenient and seamless across all my Mac devices or all my Apple devices that I would like that kind of convenience out of over ear headphones. So I'm very very likely to get a set in the future at some point, but I, yeah, I just can't justify it right now. Not after AirPods Pro, not after getting a PS5 and, and all that recently. Yeah, it's it's been an expensive fourth quarter, to say the least. Um, yeah. <laughs> so what I think is interesting is that, so the price point, now the, the headphones I'm wearing right now, these are the 
I, maybe not considered the best, but these are some of the the better branded or better model headsets that you could find in retail stores, right? They're not like a... Are those the M3s or the M4s? M3s. Uh, so that's exactly not, what I have too. They're fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. They, I mean, they're, they're great headphones. Um, they're not like you would find like maybe like an audiophiles headphones, but they still, they, they work well for what they are. And I think they're more comfortable in my opinion than, uh, than the Bose, the QC 700s, which are maybe a mm-hmm. 50 or hundred dollars more, but they have a better bass tw- response too. I found that Bose don't have fantastic bass response. So that's at least my experience from like what, four years ago, getting a pair of Bose quiet comforts. Yeah. Uh, the, I think the Bose probably excel at noise canceling right maybe in my opinion mm-hmm. in some in i guess some applications of, of noise canceling but these headphones the these being the airpods max um they're like 250 dollars more than the boat you know <laughs> than i guess what everyone is used to paying so it's like i don't know if i was more shocked at the price or just kind of like i, I guess i was just taken back by like wow 550 dollars that is more than like an iPhone SE with, you know, 128 gigs of storage, right? It's, I mean, it's yeah, it's it is. You're right. Yeah, like if you think about that, that's nuts. You can, you can buy a, a stainless steel Apple Watch, I think, for 550 bucks, if I'm not mistaken, maybe right around there. Uh, but it is expensive, and not that, not that they aren't giving or not justifying the cost with the feature set because there are a number of features, like the spatial audio, the um, I guess the spatial audio, uh, the gyroscope, um, the uh, lossless audio, but I guess surprisingly, some of the features that they were expected to have, like where you could take the headphones and put them on any way and it would automatically orientate Mm -hmm. themselves, that wasn't present. Um, It looks like it's manufactured well, and I think Apple has, I think maybe in in both of our opinions, uh, they are designed nicely. Um, but I don't know, 550 bucks just seems like a stretch for what they are, at least in the, you know, at the outset, what they're offering with that product. I don't know. I I don't know if I could really justify keeping them if they don't do anything much more than seamlessly switch Mm -hmm. than these headphones, right? If they seamlessly switch between my Mac, that's great, but I have AirPods. Yeah. It's, there's a lot of weird things around his price like that, like. It's not really doing anything hugely different than other headphones in the market. Like, it's nice. It has a digital crown. That's yes. going to be a nice, you know, tool to adjust volume, that kind of stuff. Um, but then there's other odd things, too. Like, it comes in colors, which yeah. seems like more of a lower-end product thing to do than the super high-end premium version, yes. um, which is kind of strange. So in, in that way, it kind of feels out of place. And then, like, uh, yeah, a lot of like, the features are expected to be there that weren't there. Um the, the the price is, I think, like the story around this product, which I know is common for Apple products, but this case in particular. But I think they can get away with it in this context because they have Beats headphones. If you want mm. a pair of $350 headphones that are, quote unquote, made by Apple, you can get Beats. And those are around the same price or more affordable than the Sony um, MX-1000 M4s, which, well, we have the M3, but the M4 is the current version, which is what we have. And, um, yeah, I think they can get away with it because of that. But I think you're right. Like, I don't know if the price point can justify it. Th- th- these are going to have to sound really, really good. And the hope there is that, or the kind of I guess the kind of optimism there is that HomePod sounds incredibly good already. HomePod Mini at ninety nine dollars mm-hmm. sounds really True. good. So it's possible these things really could sound significantly better than the competition. It's also possible that these um, have better noise cancellation than the competition. I mean, comparing the Sony headphones that we both have and the noise canceling and the AirPod Pros, the in ear ones, mm-hmm. it's pretty comparable. It's pretty surprising how comparable it is. Yeah, I would agree with you. I think the the one thing where I'm not sure if it's a function of the design or maybe the implementation, but the there's more distortion on the AirPods Pro when you have noise canceling on uh, mm-hmm. because of the, the way that noise canceling works, um, where the music doesn't sound as good as they do with the over-the-ear headphones, uh, these specifically yeah. the Sony, the MX3s. Um, maybe that's mm-hmm. something that they fix in the you know the over in the uh, AirPods Max, but 
Um, I don't know. Again, still, you. I think you can buy the MX4s for, I think they went on sale this week when they announced it for 280 bucks or maybe even $300. Now they're, yeah. you know, they're, they don't come in as many colors. It's, it's not an Apple product where it will seamlessly switch between your product or between your, you know, your phone and whatever the case is. Uh, it does come with a charging, uh, it does come with a charging cable. It does come with a 3.5 millimeter cable, unlike the Apple, uh, the Apple branded one where it doesn't come with no charging brick, no 3.5 to lightning connection. Wait, really? Really? At 550 and it doesn't come with a cable? It it doesn't come with a 3.5 millimeter cable. You have to buy that separately. $35. $35. That's kind of, a, wow. I mean. It comes with a case though. I would have much it, rather have had the cable than the case. Yeah. Or sorry, the bra that comes with it. <laughs> The bra, the, yeah, the, the, the brassiere, the bra. or, the brassiere or, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's really ugly looking. But I mean, I, so there's a lot of talk on whether or not this is a luxury item, and I can, uh, I'm not saying that I don't subscribe to the idea that this is a luxury item, especially because it costs 550 bucks. To your to expand on your point, where you know if this is if it doesn't have the feature set that you want, right, or has more features than you need and it's more expensive, you can always move down the chain and go to Beats. Um, is it affordable luxury? I, I don't know. I, I, I'm still really kind of uh, indexing on whether or not this is a, a, an, a luxury item not having it in my hands. Like I, I, mm -hmm. once I use it and I can understand like what the feature set is, um, I think I'll have a better assessment of that. I think at least right now, $550 just seems really steep <laughs> for what <laughs> it seems to be offering. I hope they sound amazing because if they don't, they're people are going to be disappointed. To send them back. Yeah. 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 One And one thing I also think is interesting too, and it might just be that a misunderstanding what the purpose of the U1 chip is, but I'm surprised this doesn't have U1 functionality built yeah. into it. That is interesting, though. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm just pulling up the product page here. Let me. Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna I will pull do it up. the same. Yeah, I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, share screen. Wow, they're really pushing it heavy in this on the Apple page. Like the person's floating in space using AirPods Max. Yeah. It's kind of hilarious, actually. <laughs> so, so here's the product page, and let's just take a look here. Learn more. So, you know, to your point, they don't have the U1 chip inside of the product, and I don't know. Like, part of me thinks it makes sense. Part of me thinks it doesn't. Uh, and I guess I could expand on that. Like, this isn't something where you are going to, at least I don't think, um, you're going to be taking this out and about with you that much because of the role that it plays like this to me because it supports mm -hmm. that high fidelity audio like not only are you using it with your phone but it, in my mind it also kind of fits in that i'm listening to high fidelity music watching uh, through my television like like that's maybe like the channel that i see a lot of people sitting there with their these airpod max headphones on uh not just while they're out and about um but yeah i would never take these out with me ever i i, I <laughs> no way <laughs> I would be too, too nervous, um, given the price point and I guess just, you know, how the world is. So, so they, I mean, they do look really nice. Like this piston design here, this looks super, super nice. And the way the band is, and I think, um, we mentioned this earlier, uh, whether I was on the call here, but this looks like the, the, uh, home pod, like this top here, the, uh, the canopy, it looks, I, I like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that the band does look really nice, and that's yeah. where it kind of goes into justifying the price. It's like, oh, there's all these little luxury touches like that. Does that justify the price? Does it? I don't yeah. know. I really don't know. I I don't know either. I, I the the first thought again is, um, if it doesn't justify the price, we we got to talk about the feature set, right? You know, what, what is it actually delivering on? Because Mm -hmm. All the things that are nice about it are things that really only the users gets to see and experience, right? There's not, uh, like, it's not a, uh, how would you say this? Because you're not really taking it out of the house that much, you're, you're the only one using it. I, again, I don't know. It just seems like it's a, 
the niceties are yeah. kind of slim in my opinion uh they also apparently are very heavy i think they're the heaviest over your headphone on the market or something like that really so so oh, the I, I normal did. consumer grade ones. There might be some super professional ones that are way more, but yeah, I mean it's aluminum. It's it's got a pretty you know. I mean aluminum's not the heaviest metal, but most headphones are made out of plastic. That's a good point. That's a very good point. Would yeah, they they are pushing this very very hard. Um, I don't think it's a huge deal, by the way. Like it's you know, the, it's a big weight. deal that heavy. You won't notice it that much. You're it's on your head. You're, you'll be fine. Yeah. Your next time to break. <laughs> like, Don't these headphones look great? Um, <laughs> uh, interestingly, that you know, one of the features that the that these AirPods Max were supposed to have was it was supposed to have touch controls on the side, um, mm -hmm. but those were scrapped uh, based on what I, I read for the set. I was going to call it the click wheel, not the click wheel, the um, digital crown. Yeah. I don't know. It just seems kind of weird. You're like, hey, let me turn this. Let me put my hand back here and <laughs> kind of turn the volume. Yeah. I much rather would have that. And I'm sure Apple would do this better than Sony, but the M3s, we use them in Chicago, so you might have experienced yeah. this. If you use the M3s outside when it's cold in Chicago, it would just start to activate the touch controls yeah. and pause and play and increase the volume. It was horrible. I just turned the feature off. And it took a while for them to do that. Yeah, it's... By, by well, the way, too, this is kind of a tangent, yeah. but like I, I forgot to mention this a second ago. The whole like seamless switching thing, right, compared to the Sony headphones. These mm -hmm. will switch more smoothly than Sony headphones, obviously. Little trick I found, maybe people know about this, and I just come, I'm late to the game, but a little trick I found with the Sony headphones is rather than unpairing them from a device and then repairing them to a new device, just hold mm -hmm. down the Bluetooth button until it's in connect mode, and then you can just yeah. go to whatever device you want to and just pair immediately. I just do that, and it's really not a huge problem. It's not I, a huge I might problem. be late to the game on that one, but I found that recently, and I'm like, oh, that's so much easier. It's not. No, you're right. It's it's not a huge problem. It's not like a, it's a major inconvenience, but I think that once you experience like the the magicness or the, or the frictionless uh, automatic mm -hmm. switching, which you see with your AirPods and all the other devices, you're like, this is awesome. But sometimes it can get out of control where it's like switching between devices, like bouncing between here and there, like, yeah. You're like, what? no, 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 come come back here. I want you over here on, on my iPhone. No, I'm not. Get off my iPad. Oh, or like so, one thing I ran into is I was watching a video on my iPad, then I pulled up my phone, looked like a Twitter, and then I passed a video on Twitter, so my headphones connected immediately to my phone, and then it paused what I was watching on my iPad because of the transfer. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it it can it's not it's not perfect. But no. it's better than most. It is better than most. I would agree with that statement. I guess I just bring it up because I feel like that's what the main draw is of this. And is that really worth two hundred extra dollars to get that seamless switching? When I can just hold down a button on my Sony headphones and it does something close enough. But, you know, uh, you're right. But, Holden, you won't be seen wearing the headphones. That's the thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> you won't be. I mean, you don't get to carry them around in, the, in this Gucci looking uh, like Merce thing. I, I don't know what it is. This, the, um, what do they call it? The, it's a, they call the it smart a smart case smart case where it puts the it puts the headphones into like a deep sleep where they don't lose battery i don't know it, it's kind of a cool like cool idea but they don't even give you a function like a an actual case where i could put my headphones in it and throw it in my bag without them having to be um you know worried about being damaged i would have been fine if they didn't release the smart case at all i would have been totally fine with it <laughs> i wonder if it's leather that, that's the thing that's not clear Oh, are these leather? <laughs> I bet it's not. If it's it leather, look... it's I guess a little more justified, but I bet it's not. Let's take. I mean, I'm gonna look... look at it. I'm gonna see another picture of it so I can see it more up close. Yeah. I feel like I'm being so negative on these headphones, but I really do like them. I think they're really nice. Yeah, I, I really like them as well, minus the price. Yeah, minus the price. I don't think anyone's like perfect price. Couldn't yeah. have priced it better. Yeah. Uh, AirPods Max, I'm sorry, in the box, AirPods Max smart case. So it doesn't say leather. You're right. It does not. Lightning to USB-C cable for charging. Oh, I wonder if you could actually use that for your iPad Pro. Mm, Wait, no, that, yeah. Because these charge, sorry, these, the headphones charge via lightning. I wonder, yeah, I wonder oh, if you yeah. could use that for USB-C audio. 
that would be interesting. I'm just looking at the tech specs page uh, for the the AirPods Max. I, I keep wanting to call them AirPods Pro Max. I don't know why. <laughs> I really just want to call them AirPods Studio, but that will apparently never happen. So, yeah, you know, to your point that you mentioned earlier, where they they kind of complete the lineup, where it's AirPods. AirPods Pro, AirPods Max. It sounds like, you know what they do today with the iPhone, iPhone Pro, iPhone Pro Max. So we'll see. I don't know. You want this might, let's, this is a total random tangent. It's nothing to do with our conversation at all. But sure. we've talked in the past about a 15 inch iPad. Do you think they would release an iPad Pro Max? Because they're really pushing this Max now. We now have two products with Max in it. It has nothing yeah, to do with their conversation. It's totally, and I've been against the idea of 15 inch uh, iPad Pro, but they're doing different stuff now. So they are doing different things, and I wouldn't put it past them. I think it's a, it's a very good, um, very good, sorry, very good conclusion that you know that you are drawing here. The question is, how would they differentiate it between the iPad Pro, which is already um, sorry, the, between the 12.9 and the 11 inch iPad Pro, uh, maybe the 12, maybe they would leave the 12.9 as that size or that name, the iPad mm -hmm. Pro Max, but give it some different type of functionality. And I think someone might have said that in a previous um, live stream that we had, where they're like, maybe the the Pro version, the larger Pro version, will run some like hybrid OS. I don't know. Totally, totally, 100% being serious in the next comment here. Not yeah. being sarcastic or facetious at all. They'll differentiate it by offering a smart case to keep it in a low power state and a digital crown on the side to adjust the volume. <laughs> yeah, that would totally be it. That's, that's what they would do. Totally. Not being sarcastic or facetious at all. 100% serious there. <laughs> nope, nope, not at all. But it, it's actually, um, it's impressive. Yeah. It's impressive all the different sensors that they have in each one of the head cups or ear cups. They have, yeah, they, they both have their own H1 chip. That's really yeah. impressive. And the way that uh, the or what I read was that even though the AirPods Pro, which by the way, here's this uh, throwback case for you. Is that that is there awesome. you go. Yeah, the original the, Game Boy colors too. Yep. Uh, even though the AirPods Pro have the H1 chip in them, they're I think they're only running on two cores, uh, which for the entire headset, not uh, you know one in each headphones. Where these have eight mm -hmm. cores in each cup ear cup, which is actually kind of like wow. wow. So the number of computations that they must be doing must be high. Like it must be like significant yeah. when you're thinking about the number of cores that they're using. That, yeah, that, that's really impressive. That's it really, it really sounds impressive. impressive. That's why I want to listen to some, but I don't know if I want to go into a store right now and test it. Yeah. The only place I could go into is a Best Buy, and I have friends who work there, and apparently... Um, there were people who got COVID there and work did nothing. The, the, the company did nothing about it. So I'm like not wanting to go into that store for any reason now because <laughs> mm. they've not, they mean, not, that's not really a conversation, but like, I want to listen to them. I just don't feel like I'll have an opportunity to for a while. Yeah. Because of that. Um, how, how far is your shame. closest Apple store? <clears throat> it's in um, the province place mall. So it's not that far, but it's, I'm not sure how open it is right now. You have to go with an appointment only, I think. And well, it, and like, I don't want to actually... take away from someone's appointment so I can wear a pair of headphones during the holiday season. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like people are going to go there for much more legitimate reasons to actually buy things. I want to put it on for three seconds and go, that was nice. Now you're blocked off for the next 30 minutes from letting another customer come in the store. I'm really interested, you know, the more and more we talk about, the more interested I get in the computational uh, prowess, like how, like what are they actually doing in here that they're using all these cores and they have all these different sensors and microphones? Mm -hmm. Like it's saying here, nine microphones in total. Nine. Yeah. They're using eight for noise cancellation and uh, in combination, two of the shared uh, microphones are doing for um, for voice pickup. That's kind of crazy. It is. And I, I wonder if, because you, you had mentioned this. Oh, wow. There's I, the I remember when you mentioned this. We mentioned this a while ago. We mentioned like an Apple Music loss, like a version that does lossless. Yeah. Uh, like, like our, 
very high quality files at least. Maybe yep. that ties into it somehow because, I mean, man, could Apple Music even play audio that is that high fidelity for this to make a huge difference? Well, so the iPhone supports FLAC, which is the, I think, the highest version of audio. Um, mm -hmm. FLAC, FLAC is lossless. Uh, hold on one second. But like, does any of Apple services do? I think that's, that's the point I'm trying to make. Um, I don't think, yeah. So Apple Music doesn't support um, a, a high quality lossless version. But to me, that that's where I could see like, the people, if you know the 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 people on the board or the, you know the the executive team going, you know what, we can really make a difference in music because we have the hardware in the phone. We can make these high quality headphones, and we can have a service that ties it all together with this high quality music service that has lossless. Um, I mean, I think there's even another version of, um, excuse me, uh, of of high quality audio that they have a patent on. I, I just don't remember what the name of it is called. It's not Flack. It's something like Flack. It's not Aflac either. Uh, but uh, if, if, I, if, I, if I find it, I, I will put it here uh, in the show Every notes. Every song just sounds like a duck. That's that's what Aflac files are. Yeah. Hi, let's, let's take a look here. Actually, since we're not live, high quality. Um, because there's there's another version of high quality audio, which is called Aptix, A-P-T dot X or A-P-T slash X which is Qualcomm's mm. version of high quality audio, but that's not what, they don't even support that. High quality audio, Apple. Well, it's, Qual, it's Qualcomm. They wouldn't touch with the 10 foot pole. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Apple Digital Masters. No. So here's something that they launched last year. Apple rebrands its best sounding music as Apple Digital Masters. Here, I'll, let me put this link for you message I'll put so it w it would be interesting if you know that this was a stepping stone for Apple to launch some type of high quality lossless streaming format and the link that I'll put in the chat here is for Apple rebranding their iTunes service from last year to Apple Digital Masters, but um, let's see here. Do they have what it's called? Yeah. When was that? Oh, last year, okay. Yeah. Match AAC. Uh, <laughs> so who knows? Uh, but in, in my mind, you know, to, to bring it back, I could see all the people inside of, you know, sitting around the board table. They're like, ooh, how can we do something that's going to be really fun and make us a lot of money? <laughs> Let's sell really expensive headphones. So um, <laughs> I'm just tying it together. Like Eddie Q and Tim going, yes, that sounds good. Let's do more. Um, and they're doing this the entire time too. Yeah, like, like Scrooge guys. McDuck, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> how do we ring people for more money? Yeah. <laughs> We'll get rid of uh, chargers in the new phones as well. Uh -huh. <laughs> <They're> like, <"Whoa." laughs> yeah, they all do the. <laughs> That's funny. Um, we'll bring an extra revenue of one hundred billion dollars. <laughs> yes, we'll tell them it's it's for environmental reasons. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, so I I think it's interesting. It's you know, is it a stepping stone to that type of service? Who knows? But I think that on the way there, whether it's uh, whether they're going to launch the service or not, these headphones got to sound great for that dollar amount. And it's, they especially have to sound great if they're going to support that, uh, you know, high quality audio. I don't mm -hmm. have any high quality audio in my library. Matter of fact, I don't even know how many, like outside of MP3s or waves, like how, how much high quality audio I would even own personally. I can't yeah. think of any. I'm basically all my stuff I listen to is from iTunes or from Apple Music. Uh, some yeah. stuff I got from Beatport, but I, I always bought the MP3 from Be on Beatport. So it's probably just the same qualities I would have gotten from iTunes had that song been available in iTunes. Well, wow, there's a name I haven't heard in a long time, Beatport. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I primarily, well, not primarily, I only listen to house music. And there's just some stuff you can only get on Beatport. So Yeah, no, no I, I totally know that. It's just a... It's, it's a blast from the past for me. Um, 
anything else we want practices but anyway that's besides the point wait they had some messed up what practices like just for example like you oh. can't redown at least maybe it's changed but you can't redownload a song you bought before you have to mm. download it at that moment you buy it and then you can't redownload it again if you lose that file uh oh you don't get it again it's wow. really weird yeah well they probably anyway lost that's that. totally besides the point yep um anything else we wanted to add to airpod max pro stupendous editions <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't. I think that that covers that. We spent a lot of time talking about headphones. Yeah, right. For two people who are not audio nerds, we spent a lot of time yeah. talking about headphones. Uh, let's talk about you know the same day. You know, this was uh, same day on Tuesday. Apple also announced Fitness Plus, which is Apple's fitness. I call it fitness streaming service that they are launching for people who are subscribed to either Apple One, right? You get it free there, or you can get it for I think nine ninety nine a month. Now, I think what's exciting is that this is tied to. 14.3, so that's going to be coming out as well on Monday, I would presume, because they did a gold master of the release mm -hmm. candidate uh, yesterday. But what's really cool about Fitness Plus is that you have the ability to um, kind of interact with your your fitness and see your metrics, uh, I guess, full display while while you're doing the classes. And Apple's offering a mm -hmm. number of different classes, different like different types of classes, and a number of different types of workouts. So that's really cool. Um, I so I can't actually like wait to use it. And I think most people who are either subscribed to Apple One or even use a fitness service on their iPhone are probably excited to use it as well. I don't know. What, do you, what about you? What do you think? Yeah, I have Apple One. So I have kind of no reason to at least not try yep. it. So I managed to find out we have some dumbbells in the house because it sounds like you don't need huge nice. machines, but you should have dumbbells. Yeah. Um, so I have that. And yeah, like why not? Why not give it a try? I have yeah. Apple TV. I can just work out for the TV and it's great. Yeah. Surprisingly that this isn't something that they um that was available in the, the betas, you know, throughout the 14.3 betas. I wonder why uh but they didn't allow it, people to try it. Usually there would be some level of visibility to the service, but not even at all. Uh it is exciting yeah. and it, I think kind of tagging on to that. Now the Apple Store, you know, online and physical stores are selling fitness equipment. You know, they have uh they have yoga mats. They have yoga blocks. Uh, they've always sold fitness equipment, but this is really an expansion of equipment that you would use, I would say, more in your own house than equipment that you would uh, maybe take into the gym. Um, well, I guess you could take it in the gym. But they're really, you know, it's, it's. I think it's really about getting you coming and going, right? So, hey, yeah. you, yeah. So, oh, you want to go ahead and use that uh, Apple fitness service? No problem. You need a yoga mat? I got you. Oh, you want jump rope? I got you there. Oh, do you want to listen to music while you do so? Let me show you these $549 headphones because they sound great. <laughs> <laughs> really? Right? I guess. The jump the, rope, the old... I remember actually they used to sell at the app at the um, Apple store. They did. They used to. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Those are really cool too. They, they are really cool. I think the 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 problem that I have with most kind of smart fitness equipment is that just after like a period of time, they just stop working. So where I live, um, there is a, like a community, like a, not a wellness center, but like a, uh, there, there's a community center and they have a gym there. And that fortunate enough that that gym has modern gym equipment. But the gym equipment, even though it supports gym kit, it never works. Never works. I put my watch up to it. It says, oh, you're doing a stair stepper. I'm like, awesome. It's like, oh, it disconnected. I'm like, what the hell? What's going on? Why? We mean you disconnected. I didn't do anything. So it's a little frustrating. Um, so yeah, I guess it would, I mean, I don't know how uh, the quality of the equipment that they have in the store is going to be any different than this professional equipment that they have in the community center. But it is a little frustrating when you buy something or use something that you get this kind of um, broken experience. Hopefully the stuff that they sell in the gym or in the Apple store is much better quality. You bring up a good point that I've, I had never thought about before because it's like usually technology doesn't do well if it's being shaken a lot and moved around a lot. Yeah. Usually it's not a great thing. And we're literally talking about a jump rope with with computer chips inside of it. Like, yeah, how long yes. could that possibly last? I am looking at the picture of it on Apple Store right now, and it's just it's really funny to see a jump rope with a USB connector for charging. <laughs> There's yeah. something really funny about that to me. You, and it's and I think it's not only now. it's not only that. Like, 
you're not gingerly putting down the jump rope, right? Because you're like, oh, it's a it's a microcomputer, right? I'm gonna, yeah. gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna set it down very nicely. You're like, okay, I just finished jump roping, jump roping. I'm completely out of breath. I'm putting it on the ground, right? You know what I mean? Like you're you're not forcefully, but you're you're kind of just throwing it down because it's gym equipment, and that's how people are kind of used to th- using gym equipment. Um, I don't know. It's again, it seems like it's uh we still have some time to go on on the the usability path for that gym equipment. But I am yeah. excited. They they've got everything from like dancing, kickboxing, weight work uh, excuse me, weight workouts and a number of other th- different things. I'm excited. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be good. I, I have to take another tangent for a second here. They have a bicycle helmet on the Apple Store. Hmm. Bice, not a bike helmet, a bicycle helmet. I don't know why I had to spell it all out like that. And it's two hundred and fifty dollars. What does this thing do? Oh, oh it has it, blinkers on it. That's actually uh, kind of cool. That is kind of cool. And it lights up. <laughs> they're, I'm, they're I, totally... I'm really curious what this thing does. That's like interesting. What, I don't want to get what, too much attention on the helmet, but I just thought it was interesting. There's a two hundred and fifty dollar bike helmet. Of course, there is. Um, so I, I had a trouble finding the category. Um, so like the health and fitness category on the Apple store, it has some things that are questionably not health and fitness related, like the Ember temperature controlled mug. Mm, I don't know about that one. Uh, well, coffee is better for you if it's warm. It actually is more calories if it gets cold. That's totally a health thing. And I didn't just make up any of that right now on the spot. Yeah. But some of the other stuff that they do sell here, like, uh, I do see this bicycle helmet that's two hundred and forty nine dollars, the jump rope which is eighty bucks. That that's kind of expensive. <laughs> that's literally uh, like ten times the cost of a normal jump rope. Well, look, there's a connected kettlebell for two hundred and twenty nine dollars <laughs> on on page two. Wow, that's expensive. Oh, that's interesting. I like how they do that. Uh, anyway, so we're, we're digressing. <laughs> We're like, uh, we're like, uh, deer in a headlight. We're like, oh wow, look at that. Um, so it's as we shiny, <laughs> shiny, as we switch from the Apple Fitness Plus and the Apple Store, you know, there's another new product that's available in the Apple Store. To uh, you know, I think it's as of last week, and that is the MagSafe Duo. Now, I bought this. Um, I think it was available last week, or maybe even the week prior. This is $129, and this is a MagSafe charger for your iPhone, your Apple Watch, your AirPods. Um, so first, I want you to hear this. This is probably the most satisfying noise in the entire world. Ooh, Does that sound? The magnet and the click nice. is, it is. It's very satisfying. So on that kind of level, I opened it up, I'm like, and I accidentally did it. I'm like, <gasps> I was like, oh my gosh, that sounds so nice. <laughs> But outside of that, you know, even though this is a product that has a lot of usefulness because you can charge, you know, your iPhone and your Apple Watch at the same time, especially you can you could free up, you know, dresser space or night space in your nightstand. Um, whenever you were, you know, start traveling again, you know, whether you're going to work or whatever the case is, it can, you know, you can fold it up and it's very small and compact. You can only use one side if you wanted to. Like you, you have a link bracelet that this can pivot up and now you can just uh you can charge your apple watch here without having to worry about taking it off it doesn't come with a charger which is a little bit disappointing for 130 dollars and i i don't know i i just can't see myself paying this much money or in keeping this because it's not wait it doesn't come with a charger either no it's no charger <laughs> that's it that's but the... it is a charger like <laughs> Corporate motto, that 2020, make any no chargers for anybody. <laughs> I, I guess people would have one at their home to use, but... Uh, well, they just, yeah, they just bought strange. an iPhone, right? They just bought an iPhone. That that's doesn't come with a charger. Uh, you're, you're right. It doesn't come with a charger either, but... <laughs> <laughs> so the, the thing is that if you use the 20-watt tw- the charger is the bare minimum that you have to use with this, which is 20 bucks. And in if you really want to get like the quote unquote, the the MagSafe charging speeds, you got to use something higher. And the next yeah. higher charger is I think 30 watts. 
for fifty dollars, if I'm not mistaken. It's another Apple branded charger. So it's a big brick. Um, That's even more baffling because most people aren't going to have those chargers. Most people are going to have the standard five watt chargers. Yeah, I, I don't get it either. And it's one hundred thirty dollars. Um, it can't be that sophisticated inside of there. It just can't. There's just no way. I mean, what? It's two hinges. It's it's. You're right. It's two hinges. But it sounds really good. I mean, come on. What can it you complain really about? It? The cl the click is Justified. so satisfying. You're just like this. <laughs> it's like a what do you call those those little like a fidget spinner, right? It's like that kind of. Yeah. <laughs> you're like hello. <laughs> Your old flip phone. Oh God, that is one thing that's really satisfying is when you entered a phone call, flipping it. I yep. think oh, there was a comedian who did this. Who's like, this isn't as satisfying. Like, mm. yeah, <laughs> like, just like tapping the screen. I can't remember who yeah. was that made that joke. Um, go back to dual uh, the um, MagSafe Duo though. Like, I really want the MagSafe Duo. Whenever I get an iPhone that has MagSafe built into it, it's a great product. If you have an Apple Watch and an iPhone for travel, that's really great to have. So, like, I still would get one i think but man so l let me tell you something now here i found this the other day this is not on the on the show notes um there's this company called Sateki. have you ever heard of them satichi no hold on show me it's it's Sateki, right hold on products chargers wireless chargers yes here it is how do you okay. spell it Sateki? Yep, I'm gonna put it in the, uh, so yeah, it's Sateki. Yeah. yeah, put in the chat. So this company, Sateki or Satichi, um, they're making a new USB-C magnetic wireless charger. So it's MagSafe compatible. Uh, it'll work with. Ooh. Sorry, I mean, it's, it's nice looking, go ahead. Oh wait, I'm... it's a whole, hold on. It's, uh, I guess it's not MagSafe compatible now that I'm reading it. Well. But it looks it's like a MagSafe. That's weird. Oh, they have a really nice hub there. Yeah, they do. They do have a nice hub. They, so they make, like I, I think they make, hub. they make quality equip, uh, quality accessories. Uh, everything built in charger, quality charger iPhone up to seven F Watts plus this convenient magnetic connection. So I guess the reason why I brought it up here is that if you have an iPhone, uh, if you had a, an an older iPhone, you could add the sticker on there to make it magnetic and then it would charge your phone. That's why I put that in there. If you go, if you click on the magnetic sticker here uh, in the center of the page, right next to the, mm -hmm. where it shows pre-order now. So we'll, we'll <laughs> I guess we digressed here for a few minutes for nothing <laughs> because I actually thought this was a MagSafe charger, not a, uh, not a, just a, it's just a USB-C magnetic wireless charging cable. Yeah. But it is, it literally looks just like a MagSafe charger. It does. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Son of a gun. They do well, have though the trio wireless charging pad and that looks really nice for one twenty. I actually don't think that's that bad. It's a wireless charger for your phone, your AirPods, and an Apple Watch, which is basically what you were going to be throwing on an Air Power. Yep. Like this looks that looks really nice. It does look really nice. The uh yeah, so this is you know, I guess it really depends where you're going to use this. If you're going to, if you're going to use this, you know, on your bedside, it probably doesn't matter to you whether you're charging it at 15 watts or at seven and a half watts because you're sleeping, right? And you're not using mm -hmm. your phone in the middle of the night. Um, yeah. I would say that I probably wouldn't even want fast charging at my bedside table. I would want it only like at my desk where I'm using it uh, or I'm going to take my phone on or off. Uh, but still, this is actually, you're right. This is really nice for 130 or $120. And it probably comes with a cable. That's the best part and a charger. <laughs> oh man, that's, I, I could just see them like, here, here they go again. They're like, we're not going to give anyone chargers in 2012 or in 2020. No one's going to get it. And even 2021. You'll buy a charger and it won't come with the charger in the box. That's, that's, yeah. what's, gonna, that's what's going to come to you one day. I, yeah. I, I'm back in that page. It says USB-C magnetic wireless charging cable. But if you want it to be magnetic, 
by the magnetic sticker. What? Yeah, th- that's the part that it's doesn't. Uh, it's a little confusing. It is very confusing. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, back to uh, <laughs> back to uh, so uh, back to the uh, MagSafe Duo. Oh, clarification. I I got clarification on that. Sorry. Wireless charging is supported on iPhone 11 Pro Max, 11 Pro, 11. Magnetic sticker sold separately is required for iPhone 11 models and iPhone 12 cases without MagSafe enabled. So if you want it to be uh... magnetic, you put that sticker on your phone, and then you can uh... get the magnetic stuff. That way, if you don't have MagSafe on your iPhone, that makes much more sense. But if you have a 12, mm. 12 Pro Max, 12 Mini, 12 Pro... It, it just out of the box just as works. Okay, I get it now. That makes sense. So real, it is Mac safe. Real time feedback. Thank you, Holden. No good. problem. I don't want to I, bring Satechi down because it seems like they make good stuff. Yeah, I I have um their their one um this is their that stand that you see on there for their iPad. Mm, that's this nice. Is, yeah, this is I do I love this thing. It folds like all different types of ways. Um, I usually have my iPad on there during the day and there's a couple of, like I have a couple of the keyboards and even their, um, their Apple watch charger that you see on there. That's USB-C that I have that. So they make good stuff. Uh, let's see here. So at $129 Holden, I cannot in good conscience really tell someone to go buy this because it's just, I think underwhelming. That's the word that I used in my video. I was like, I mean, this is underwhelming and it doesn't come with a charger. That's like the biggest part. Like if you really yeah. want to get, take advantage of it. Now it's, it's super cool that it, I love this, love the sound, but if, unless you're infatuated with the sound, like I am, I would not spend it. I mean, it's got, it's got real nice accents. Like you see here, the, uh, the lightning port here in the back is all stainless steel. That looks, I mean, that's, that's classy stuff. Uh, but not for 130 bucks. My wife's like, are you going to keep that? I'm like, no. She's like, okay, I wouldn't either. I'm like, okay. You want to, but you, you shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely, it's not a, not a, not a recommend at this point. 130 bucks. Um, so with the MagSafe Duo being in stores, you know, they also, you know, we talked about in the beginning, 14.3 coming out, where I think that the, the, the salient new features in, in addition to Fitness Plus being there are two things. So one, Apple really talked about app store privacy and how apps would need to adopt like a nutrition label, more or less, of what these apps are doing with your data. So that feature is now going to be rolling out in 14.3 in addition to Apple's um, raw photography format being supported on camera on the pro models in addition to being editable in the Photos app. Now, I've taken a few night photos using uh, Pro Raw, and I am surely impressed with how, not clear, but I mean, how good they look in comparison to the, uh, the uh, process photos uh, from mm-hmm. the iPhone camera. I'm really, th- I really think they're going to make, um, I think this is a stepping stone for them bringing Pro Raw video. Uh, sorry, ProRes video to the iPhone next year in in terms of capabilities for um, what it will do mm-hmm. in in iPad or iOS 15. But um, anything for you that you're most looking forward to other than Fitness Plus, like we talked about? Um, the the Pro Raw stuff is interesting to me. Just but even yeah. though like I don't take photos necessarily, it's just it's, it's obviously a really big step. Yeah. But the apps for privacy stuff, I think, is really important. I mean. Yeah, the App Store privacy rule is basically a giant middle finger to the entire social media industry, mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. Um, and I, I, I got sent a video of Craig Federighi at some sort of privacy conference in the EU, and I and I haven't seen it yet, and I should have watched it for this. Um, but basically, in it, he essentially says that. You know, they're sticking to their guns. They're they're doing this no matter what Facebook says or what these other big gigantic corporations do, and it's just I don't know. Like we like to think that you know giant corporations are you know evil or you know whatever, but I I really genuinely feel like Apple is doing a good thing with with their privacy takes, and this is an, an important step in that I think. Like I I legitimately think it'd be a dark future without Apple pushing these buttons. <laughs> So one of the things I always thought about is that 
everything that Apple talks about that they do that's for the consumer really just kind of benefits them if you, if you think about it. I mean, oh yeah, I, I, yeah, totally. Like, remember when Gizmodo found their iPhone 4? Like someone left it in a bar? <laughs> yeah, and the, the Apple SWAT team came and took it back. <laughs> yeah. So, like, if you, th- if you think about, like, them putting FaceTime on the phone, uh, iMessage on the phone, everything that's, like, encrypted, that's built around security, is really kind of to insulate them from anyone knowing what their business is. Mm-hmm. Like, you could, uh, like, they're obviously, you know, internally at Apple, they use... Uh, mess- or messages in chat for internal collaboration. They use FaceTime audio for internal communication. Um, if you have an iPhone, like you can store, uh, sorry, if you have an iPhone, but if you use notes on your iPhone, you can have those notes stored locally on your device so they're not being synced to anywhere. Like all those services are kind of built to benefit Apple and the uh, as a kind of a, an adjunct to that, you the consumer or I the consumer get the benefit of it because they're using those services internally. Uh, I don't know. It's just kind of an so, interesting take. I actually know for a fact that iMessage is not used as the internal company-wide messaging platform. It's 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 not, so it's not it's not iMessage, but there's a internal messaging platform that's built on iMessage, right? I don't know Are if you... it's built on iMessage or not, but I've actually heard a lot of complaints about it, and people really? wish that it was iMessage. Yeah. Oh, well, um, that's interesting. Yeah, but I I would agree with you though that like they do these things to benefit themselves. I definitely agree with that. I still think that it's yes. it benefits consumers as well. But I definitely totally. agree with this idea that it benefits them because like if they can position themselves as the privacy company, yeah, that's yes. beneficial for consumers. But it's also a great marketing pitch um, for them. They make their money off of hardware. They don't have an incentive financially to sell your yes. data, and they can now prop that up as look at us. You should buy yeah. from us. This is a marketing bullet point that we can now check off. And it, it's a good one for, for – it's like when someone says, oh, we're green for the environment. And even even the case of Apple in this context. Like, yeah, that's really good that they're doing that. It's good for everyone. But at the same time, it's also something that they can use to market themselves. It benefits them in, in that in that way. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Good point. Um, it's, it's like a – where – it's like a, a strategy, uh, I'm trying to think, uh, Ben Thompson, uh, he runs a website called Stratechery. He, he, call, or he calls it a, a strategy credit where m- most things, or there are some companies that have these, these points on their strategy where they uh, work against them, right? Let's just say like Facebook and uh, about collecting data in order to mine data to, to be able to sell better ad- advertising. Well, so mm-hmm. that is a, a, a debt or de- debit to, to Facebook where people like Apple have these credits where those those long-term positions that they have in privacy help them out in the long run because like you said it's something where they can actually say hey this is uh this is really good for you the consumer and while also benefiting them um it is interesting very interesting yeah well, there's um it's like I don't I guess I like yeah I, I agree it's it's that nice um this is kind of like a Steve, a Steve Jobs kind of thing to say, but it's an intersection of the com- company's interest and the in the consumer's interest in in a positive yeah. way. Like company, there's never going to be a point at any company ever at any point in history, of uh, past, but also going into the future, of a company doing something that hurts them, but is also good for consumers. It's never going to work that way. No. No, you're right. Companies are going to do things that benefit themselves. They're going to go customer first, but customer first and, okay, we're going to make profit off of this, any number of reasons. And this is a good intersection where it's kind of good for everyone. So Yeah. No, you're right. Except for Facebook and social media companies in this context. They're pissed. Yeah, they they are mad. And I I mean, not rightfully so, but um, I think they've operated with too much latitude for so many years. And now they're like, oh, wow, we really have to change or we have to change to some degree what we're doing and how do we, you know, make that shift both with our own customers who are not you and mm-hmm. I, or it's their, their, their advertisers and the people that buy advertising units from them, but also how do we make that shift with our employees and the culture and the mindset? So it's, it's tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, not an easy job to do on that same line, which I think is interesting uh, where Apple is the only company 
I think where they're offering home, they're opening, uh, excuse me, they're offering secure video, right? HomeKit secure video where you, if you have mm -hmm. a camera on their network, sorry, if you have a camera on your own home network, you're getting uh, X amount of storage for free. Now there's a new camera that's coming out from Logitech, which is the HomeKit secure video doorbell from Logitech that is, I think, shipping now, uh, or at least it was available for order as of yesterday. And this will allow you to go ahead and, and connect it or use it at your house as a video doorbell, like Ring or like those other companies. But all that data that is uh, recorded and streamed is stored in Apple's uh, or in your iCloud account, which I think is very nice. I don't know if you have video cameras yeah. at home. Uh, I have one. I have a, is it Logitech maybe? I think it is Logitech. Um, I did order this one, but I haven't seen it yet. Uh, but it's it's actually kind of a nice, refreshing, like a, a weight off your shoulder that you, you don't feel like Google is mining who comes to my house, uh, my, you know, my video stream for who comes to my house, when I open the door, what I'm listening to. Like there's not this kind of like worry. And I like that. This camera is $199. Uh, you have to self-install. But it is a camera where um, if you're not familiar with their cameras, they do make, I think, really good. Cameras have high quality optics, which is the nice thing about it. And again, there's no service fee associated with it. Uh, do you own a camera today? That's actually kind of huge. A lot of those security cameras have some sort of like, we'll store this many minutes of footage. And then after yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. There's, so I think right now there's there's really kind of two camps. So there's You ha either have a monthly service fee where you're paying for someone to store that data in the cloud and do analysis in the cloud. Or you have kind of a roll your own solution where you're doing storage on site at your house or your business, whatever the case is. Um, getting into the into cameras where they stored everything here, like at your house, uh, can be quite costly because a lot of times the hardware is more expensive. Um, it's, it, yeah, and you need you, you need a different kind of network sometimes depending on how, many, uh, how much data you're actually putting through your network. It can be quite expensive. I looked into um, some, I would say middle grade, consumer uh, networking gear from Aruba, if I'm not mistaken. And it was, I, I'm like, I can't, I can't justify spending that money on the camera. Um, like $400 a camera. I'm like, wow, that's 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 costly. But I digress. Um, if you don't own a camera, I would suggest when you do get one, definitely check out something that is HomeKit secure compatible because mm -hmm. you can look at it on your, like you can look at uh, on your phone, obviously you can tag, um, you could have it do uh, facial recognition on your in iCloud, so it's all encrypted. It does work uh, pretty well. That's cool. That's really awesome. Yeah. yeah uh, Apple's. Where do you want to go if you need privacy? As always. Yeah. Um, Maybe need privacy. Everyone should want privacy. The whole like, if you don't have anything to hide, who cares? It's not true. Just people like to feel like they're not being watched all the time. Yeah. It's a nice peace uh, of mind thing. It, it is a nice peace of mind. But you also have the flip side of that where you have people who are doing bad things and they know that they go and take advantage of, not take advantage of, but exploit Apple's stance on privacy. But we're, uh... yeah. I, I take that approach there. Like it's better to let some guilty people go than to have anyone innocent kind yeah. of be in this context, like put in harm's way or something like that. Yeah. Um, sorry, to take a break here. How much, do you, are you good on time? Because we still have a couple things to go. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Okay. Cool. I can't play Cyberpunk uh, for at least three more hours, so we're we're good. <laughs> I'm like holding. You're all pixelated. Like I just turned on the the download. <laughs> okay. Um. So along those same lines, with talking about like you know secure video, Nest kind of I think funny that Nest is now offering or Google's now offering the ability to stream Apple Music on your Nest, Google Nest speakers. I'm like, did hell just freeze over? Because this just seems really weird. <laughs> I'm like, an Apple service available on Google hardware? What? Come on. It's not like it's an Android. Uh, Steve Jobs, and I'm not sure if this is something he came up with or if he kind of just uses the quote, like he uses the Wayne Gretzky ice um, hockey puck quote a lot. Yeah. He's like, when iTunes came to windows, he's like, it's like giving to someone in hell, a nice cold uh, glass of uh, ice water. <laughs> yeah. It, this isn't quite the same thing, but it's definitely Apple music. I think is better. Yeah. Well, so I guess to expand on that, matter, there are a number of different streaming services that are available on Google nest uh, audio or Google nest speakers. So Apple's mm -hmm. not the first there's, 
you know, you could Spotify, whatever the case is. I think that's just, um, maybe it's some kind of like a quid pro quo uh, where Apple's like, hey, listen, if you uh, if you let me in on your speakers, I'll let you into HomeKit. Like maybe that's like the deal. Like they're gonna you start seeing like Nest uh, accessories available at HomeKit. That would be really nice because many people who have Nest speakers, you can't really gracefully integrate Nest uh, the speakers mm -hmm. or the um, the thermostats into HomeKit, which is unfortunate, yeah. but that's well, just the way it is. Well, yeah, well, actually, I was looking at the uh, like getting a smart thermostat, and I'm just like, I have to pass up on Nest. But I also wouldn't have gotten Nest anyway because I just really actively don't want anything Google in my home. Uh, mm -hmm. But we 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 uh, we passed on Nest also just because it's not integrated to HomeKit. If I can't say you know hey hey s change the the temperature, then it like totally yeah. defeats the purpose. Yeah. Um, which one did you end up going with? So we went with the Ecobee, but here's the yep. problem. Mm -hmm. um, we looked at the instructions, and then we took apart a thermostat and realized that we have a two wire set up for thermostat and you need to have a four Th or five wire so we need to okay. basically have our system rewired and like well, at that point we can walk downstairs and just change it manually it's fine oh okay so it didn't didn't end up getting one but whenever i get uh, another place that's something to uh to look for for sure okay yeah i remember the the last two places i was at uh last two places before here i had to install the power conversion kit the kit that you, if you look, when you opened up your Echo B, yep. there's like an additional module you have to install on the furnace. I'm like, I'm going to blow something up. I could just see this is not going to work <laughs> out for me. But thankfully I did not. Yeah, the video uh, for that, because they're showing me how to do that kind of stuff. It said, uh, this video is for professionals. And I'm like, great, I am screwed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you know, I used to be an electrician. I have a degree in electrical engineering. This should be no big deal. I got this. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, on that same thread, talking about Google Apple integration, I think uh, for people who use Google Photos, now you see you're starting to see that when you sync or when you like a photo on Apple Photos, that data will flow back and it'll, that photo will be liked inside of Google Photos and vice versa. I think that's a really nice, um, it's a really nice kind of added benefit because not many people. Or sorry, there are many people who use Google Photos in addition to Apple Photos as like a belt and suspenders kind of deal, right? Like a yep. you know, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so just the more things that you can get to seamlessly sync between the two services, the better off consumers are. I used to That's teach good. people how to, you know, uh, use their technology, and I I would see so many people using Google Photos to back up their photos. Yeah, so many people. Absolutely, so it's nice integration. It's. Um, because I think for the most, I mean, up until recently, they were giving you like unlimited storage for not very much money. I think it's not free. Yeah. It, yeah. That's exactly why people would do it. Yeah. Like, so oh, I can pay Apple two bucks a month for a hundred gigs, or I could just use Google yeah. photos. They can mine the hell out of my personal data, including what my dog and family and all them look like. And then I get free storage. Woo. So <laughs> when will Apple get rid of this 50 gig tier? Is it 50 gigs for or five gigs for for free? Is that what they five do? Five gigs for free, yeah. Never, because people are willing to spend the two bucks. At least enough people, I think, are willing to spend the two bucks a month. They got to change it. I think ideally what would be really nice, you get the exact number of storage as your iPhone. Like you buy an iPhone, it's a 64 gig iPhone, you get 64 gigs in the cloud. Oh, wow. And then if you oh, need more than that because you want to offset storage, you want to be able to store mode for photographs, then what can, your 64 gigs can hold, you can do it. But at least you can know your iPhone will be backed up into iCloud, no problem. Hmm. That's actually a, a, that's a pretty good idea. I never thought about that. So you're just, you're saying for every iPhone that, so if you own like an iPhone and an iPad, is it like combined? Would you, I guess, I, obviously it's not real, but I'm saying, was that what you would think? Um... People rely so much on their iPhones. I think this having this tied to iPhone exclusively is fine. But I see your point. Like, why doesn't the iPad storage and then the Mac storage as well like tie into that? But I think people are way more particular about their phone and their phone setup and having their phone backed up than their yeah. other devices. Like, I feel like if my iPad was run over by a car I, I and I didn't have a backup, I do, but like <laughs> hypothetically I don't. I, I it wouldn't bug me. But if I lost my phone and my phone was run over by a car, like that would be more detrimental problem. 
Yeah. Yeah. But I also, I, I don't know, I thought of that a long time ago and things have changed since I had that idea because, like, now your messages store on the cloud. So you wouldn't even lose your messages if you don't have a backup. Uh, you wouldn't, you, you've never lost your apps before, but at least remember, like, your app locations. Um, like, context calendars, that's always fine. I think most people would be okay if they didn't have a backup. But I guess they would, I take that back, because I guess they would need to have their photos backed up. People care about their photos a lot, and that's not just stored in the cloud for free, regardless of your iCloud storage. Unlike messages, which is stored in the cloud, regardless of your... And what's becoming storage. more and more uh, prevalent and important is your health data. So I'll, obviously your health data doesn't take up a lot, but yeah. your health data is now backed up into iCloud as well. I'm just looking right now, my iCloud storage manage, I don't think I want to know. <laughs> um, so I'm on a two terabyte plan and I have 1.4 terabytes left. Joel, this is something really pathetic. It's just like, I just, I barely store anything. I'm really, really? like, oh yeah. So let, let's go to, I'm sure this is going to be shockingly low. So iCloud. <laughs> so of my iCloud storage, I have two terabytes because I'm also on the premium. <laughs> I'm also the premium plan. I have used <laughs> of that two terabyte, two thousand gigabytes. I have used twenty five point six gigabytes of the storage. Oh wow! Yeah, and I'm like, here, I'll show my camera. Like, legit. Yeah, twenty five gigabytes of two terabytes. That's I don't store funny. a lot. I don't. I try to. I'm very minimalist. I try to keep things as light as possible. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's hilarious so, though. Oh crap! Now my phone camera's out of sync. Whoop! Nope. I have to turn my camera off. The back on again. Hold, please. Sorry. Okay. No problem. I'm still here. Okay. Oh, uh, no, I would say work. that out of my roughly 700 megabytes, 700 gigabytes of data, I have 400 for photos and video. 23 gigs for documents in the cloud, 14 gigs for backups, 12 gigs for messages, and 1.2 gigs for uh, mail. I don't even use mail that much. I weird? had the weirdest thing. I was going through all my storage to like clear things out and free things up, and I had <laughs> nine gigabytes in mail. Wow. Yeah, and it was just my sent folder was just filled. It was like I had emails from eight years ago in my sent folder, which is really weird for me. Like I keep my inbox at zero whenever possible. Hmm. That's um, so weird. I clear that out, but like, yeah, it was really weird. Huh. Uh, that is quite weird. So at least you know, uh, on that, um, on that, you know, to bring it back, it would be. I guess ideal where they would giving something more storage where you wouldn't have to go to Google to sync your photos as a backup, but mm -hmm. you can't make everybody happy. Uh, um, and the last, or sorry, the next topic that we have on, the, on there is where these new Apple CPUs are on the horizon. We're talking about something where there are more cores than current. So 16, 20, 16 and 20 core uh, Mac products uh, in comparison to the new, uh, sorry, let me let me start that over again. <laughs> yeah. So, last but not least, we have Apple rumors coming out from Bloomberg where they're talking about more cores in the Apple Silicon chips, somewhere in the neighborhood of 32 performance cores. So, for those who are unaware, right now in your, if you have an M1 MacBook, MacBook Pro, Mac Mini. There are eight cores, there are eight performance cores, sorry, four performance cores and four uh, high efficiency cores. Uh, and these new Macs are like drool worthy where you're getting something in the neighborhood of 32 performance cores. Like it's it's clearly like um, something that is gauged for a Mac Pro, right? Maybe an iMac Pro, something of that nature. But it does make the decision for people who currently own an M1 MacBook, like myself, a little bit harder saying, oh, wow, do I really want to keep this or do I want to wait maybe six months or a year and get something that's really, really full featured? I don't know. But just when you think about 
the thermal envelope that you can get out of a Mac Pro with an M1 and think about putting like four times the at cores, like, wow, this thing's gonna scream performance. Uh, I, yeah, this is, here's, here's my, yeah, this just hit me right now too. This might be a max, like it'll start at eight cores and you can get a 16 and a 32. And that's the equivalent of going to like the I5, the I7, the I9 or something like that. Cause yeah. I, I don't know. But then again, like if you told, if you told me the performance of the M1 chips before they were officially announced, it would have been like, no, that's bananas, man. That's way too fast for a MacBook Air. They're not going to do that. So this really could be just like the one chip with that many cores. It is... If you would take the M1 chips as they were, you could put those in a Pro machine, and it would be great. Mm -hmm. It'd be a it's very. I mean, you have to increase the RAM, but it'd be a very capable device. This I can't even. I can't wait to see what these things are capable of. Now that can I not wait to see what they're capable of? I, I mean, I'm really curious. Are they get is the like if you think about the the iMac Pro and the Mac Pro, are they going to scale like the cost from a cost perspective? Are they going to scale where it's fifty thousand dollars to buy a fully loaded Mac Pro running Apple Silicon? I think probably the answer is no, mm -hmm. but you know it's 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 not going to be linear like how it is for the. Um, so I mean, it's not going to be it's not going to be linear like it is for the Mac Pro. I would love to see like them to completely undercut like their own business, like chop their foot off and be like, oh, you know what, Intel, fuck you, we don't need. Sorry, I swore there. <laughs> so you know what, Intel, I'm, whatever. I'm offended. I'm offended. <laughs> Intel, you you can you can go uh, go. I don't know. However, you say something for some negative. You can you can go piss off an Intel, mm -hmm. right? Because I have this computer that's three times as fast, costs half as much, and there's no Intel tax on it. Um, I think that would be great. But the question is, yeah. what happens to the iPad? Yeah, I, I'm not saying that like facetiously, but like you. You have these machines no. that are running on the same silicon. They're at, at the very core of them. They're capable of the same things. What happens to the iPad? It's got to yeah, do something. We were talking different. about this the other week where it's like, oh, right, why yeah. not make the pro models of the iPad have these M chips in it? Because if they're that fast, throw it on there. Start putting the pro apps on there. Final Cut and Logic as like touch based versions. Like you could do so much with those devices. Yeah. I would i would really like to see this new macbook pro 16 inch with these 20 cores and have it completely completely quiet and, and cool i'm sorry i was just looking at this mac pro so the thing that just amazes me i'm going to show it here on screen and for those of you who are listening to this uh, we do do this live every week uh check the link for the description so this mac pro 13 inch i was editing video, 4K ProRes video on this. And it was completely, completely silent and cool. I was sitting on the couch. So this was on my lap. I'm like, is this on? I'm like, it doesn't, it feels cold. It was like 86 degrees, which is not very warm for a laptop. I'm like, this is actually kind of comforting. I like it. And I was surprised by how quick and the battery lasted for like, I mean, I was able to get like an hour and a half worth of editing uh, using this. So I am super, super to be hyper, uh, hyper, uh, hyperbolic, uh, excited for seeing these new Macs with these 20 cores when they come out, hopefully next year. Yeah. And, and to contrast that with my 15 inch MacBook pro from 2017, if Chrome even is open with no tabs, op like running any web pages, the fans kick in, like it's begging for life. Like it's, it's, just it's the contrast yeah. and performance is amazing. So uh, we talked about I'm even hyperbolic, show. but like it really is not far off. Though. <laughs> yeah, I I know the pain because you know we talked about it before the show. I sold my GPU that I was using with my uh, with my Intel Mac because the performance on my Mac Mini and this MacBook Pro, the 13 inch MacBook Pro, was just so unreal, and the cost. I don't, I don't need it anymore. Like I, I sold it and I'm actually kind of glad that I did. I'm going to be all in on Apple Silicon here very soon. I just need a couple more apps to get updated. Mm -hmm. Just a couple, just a couple. Come on. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, just, when do you think this is going to come out? Does it say actually didn't even came up as a date? 
So in the article um, from Nine to Five Mac, they have these new uh, they have these new up to tw twenty core CPUs late in twenty twenty one. So we would see this, you know, in the same time frame that we are right now next year. Next MacBook Pro boosts twenty core CPUs. It could release the initial versions of only eight of the twelve cores being high performance. The highest end machines are planned to feature 64 or perhaps 128 graphics cores, which would be several times faster than the current graphics module uses for the NVID from uses from NVIDIA and AMD. That's just bananas. Yeah. So this is why Apple never made a deal with NVIDIA. Right? Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. The, like NVIDIA, we know that your stuff's gonna be real, real fast, but we don't need <laughs> you. Just wait and see. Yeah, we don't need you. So, I, yeah, I, I can't even fathom how that's even going to shake up the professional industry. Because one of the number one things I hear about like Premiere over Final Cut is, oh, well, if you have a really good PC setup, you can export your videos faster in Premiere than you could in Final Cut. Um, potentially, again, depending on your rig and that kind of setup. But with, with that kind of performance, I, I can't even imagine that being true anymore. So, like, I, can't, I can't fathom that. Yeah, so the difference between Premiere on Windows and on a Mac. So on Windows, they use uh, CUDA, uh, which is the the, the graphical, um, it's it's the GPU acceleration. And on Windows, it uses Metal. I'm sorry, on, um, on Mac, it uses Metal. Mm -hmm. Now, I probably would say within the last six or eight months, Premiere started adopting all of the APIs for Metal. And it's actually, it's gotten a lot faster. It's not as fast mm -hmm. as Final Cut for sure, but it is much faster than it had been in the past where I'd say it's comparable the performance uh, to Final Cut on a, yeah. a Mac with a AMD uh, GPU. Yeah. Did I say NVIDIA? Or, no, from AMD, yeah. Yeah. So, but you're that's right. Really the, the thing that's going to stop or prevent the pro you know professional market from coming over is going to be all of the different you know uh, the plugins that are not supported like a lot of the video plugins that i have work fine the audio plugins don't like you can't get good, good interfaces on m1 uh like like audio equipment uh, i've read an article about how many manufacturers are not supporting or have not supported their um their audio interfaces on m1 chat so i think that'll take time for sure yeah so when they That'll start seeing this performance, I feel like there's going to be a, a push to get more professional plugins like that running on M1 or on the M series chips because there'll just be a demand from professionals to want to harness that kind of power. Yeah. So that's yeah, going like, to accelerate things. Yeah, you're right. And some, so some of the things you, uh, like depending on the audio interface, you might have the road halfway paved, like if it already supports Thunderbolt, but like you have a lot of these audio interfaces that are still um, USB A, USB 2. USB A2 mm -hmm. uh, 2.0, and they need to be updated. So they have to do a whole bunch of, uh, you know, re-architecting of that audio interface. So it'll it'll be time, I bet. Won't be for... God, that's crazy that a professional level tool would still use USB 2 nowadays. So that's my so my... slow in comparison. Well, like, it, it, really slow in comparison. It is slow, but you have to think about like what, uh, what does it need to be faster? Like mm -hmm. does the... Does the tool that you're using really need the interface that it's communicating over to be faster for and for what reason? Um, like uh, some DJ equipment doesn't use any, you know, depending on what it's sending over, it's not very, it's uh, the bandwidth needed is not very high. Mm -hmm. um, Interesting. So, Interesting. yeah. So, I don't know. I'm, I am hopeful that this new, the new dawn of computing that we are in, Holden, uh, uh, gets here pretty quickly because I like to see faster machines and I, I like having an easier workflow. And I drool over yeah. a, a 128, 128 core GPU. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> That's got to be, like there's no way there's going to be a 128 core GPU in a you know 16 inch MacBook Pro. That's got to no. be for like the Mac Pro and the, the equivalent. There's just, it has to be. <clears throat> but, but again, what, like this whole journey has been so surprising so far. The, who knows? Who knows? Well, what if Apple made external GPUs? Yeah. Like eGPUs made by Apple, yeah. 
Yeah. What if they made eGPUs and you could plug in 128, 128 core eGPU into your MacBook Pro, your 13 inch MacBook Pro and get all that acceleration? That would be ridiculous. Or put it into a MacBook <laughs> Air and just have the whole thing melt in front of you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that would be one way they could solve getting more displays out because, so, uh, sorry, that would be one way they could sol solve the problem with only having, you know, limited display ports if you had an eGPU with some type of display out. Mm -hmm. That is the one thing I'd say I don't like about the MacBook Pro over the Mac Mini is the limitation on the hardware ports, right? So you can only get one external display yeah. compared to two on the Mac Mini. But first generation, what are you going to do? I yeah, don't know. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, Holden, is there anything else that you want to talk about today? Uh, I did have a, one little tiny thing to say about the family sharing. Um, no oh, yeah. Subscriptions. Nothing like huge tangent wise, but just what a great no. idea. I, I'm That's very cool. surprised that that even happened. Here, oh, here let me, let me, let's, let me introduce the topic. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, so other than, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. So no, other no, than you're, you're, the, go for it. Yeah. other than these drool worthy CPU and GPU configurations that they're leaking out, uh, I think we want to talk about family sharing and family sharing subscriptions and how it's now available to consumers. Uh, Holden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I do a family sharing because because of Apple One, actually, I do family share with my mom because why not? Like it's basically the Apple Music, Apple News, Apple Arcade, Apple Fitness. The storage yep. is now included in that. Like, it all just shares between us. Like, why not take advantage of that? But now, like, I got Fantastical, and I love Fantastical. It's a great calendar app. It's a mm -hmm. subscription, though. And now everyone in the family can can use that. Um, I use an app called Blinkist, which is like a reading book summaries, essentially. And now everyone in the family can can take advantage of that. Like, it's just a great idea, and I'm, I'm surprised that companies like Blinkist, like Fantastical are allowing it, excuse me, because I kind of figured, well, wouldn't that harm their business model? But I actually think that for some people, this might incentivize them to buy a Fantastical. Oh, that $40 a year. That's not just for me. That's for everyone in the family. So we can all use this kind of better calendar app. I I'm surprised it happened, but I'm, I'm glad it happened. Hmm. So, oh, hold on. Uh, I hit the wrong button. I'm sorry. So, no I did not know, so I knew that they were doing family sharing, but I didn't know that to the degree like Fantastical was supported. I, I only have a couple apps that are supported. I'm looking at mine right now. Like Drafts is available with family sharing and uh, it was Do, the Do app. Uh, but I'll have to look into Fantastical because I love Fantastical as well. I think it's a great app for scheduling, kind of visibility to your calendar. That's great. I wish there, are, mm -hmm. there were more of them, like deliveries. I use deliveries constantly. Do you know what deliveries is? Yeah, Deliveries is a fantastic app, yeah. I know they had yeah. a subscription, though. Yeah, they just came out with a subscription model this year. Uh, uh, maybe two months ago, whenever they relaunched it. Um, but there are a ton of great apps, and I hope more developers support the subscription service or the subscription sharing because people are getting subscription fatigue. Like, I don't want to pay 40 bucks for me or uh, for, for Fantastic Hell, maybe 15 for my wife or whatever the case is for these uh, subscription apps. So I'm very excited that they are doing family sharing now for subscriptions. I'm actually double checking if Fantastic House included in that because let's see. Hmm. And for those of you wondering where to find it, if you go into settings, click on uh, subscriptions in the first section and then go down to uh, it actually she brings up all your subscriptions there. If you click on any individual subscription, it will tell you what if it's available as family sharing. So it's I don't because it tells me that I click on family sharing, and yeah, and then I go to subscriptions, Apple subscriptions, and then it just says Apple subscription for your family, and then it lists only Apple TV, and I can click on that one, and then it lists Apple TV, but I already have Apple TV because of I think it might be going to be getting confused. Yeah, hmm, interesting. I'm confused then. Well, I don't think um, so. I think you're 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 on the right path because it's a great it's a great benefit for consumers, right? It's it's a great benefit mm -hmm. for consumers because you're getting ways to kind of increase the product that you're using, decrease costs, and I think it's really just making consumers uh, it's increasing their sentiment with the app because they don't have to you know pay two or three times depending on how many people are in their family. 
Yeah. Um, but it is. I I hope they hope they do that with. We're gonna go on a tangent here. I really hope that they bring uh, Apple Care into Apple One. That's my next hope. That would be amazing. I think that they, it, having a just a subscription for Apple Care for all your owned Apple devices registered to your name that'd be great. Yep, that would be great. I would really like that a lot, Holden. <laughs> As I bring I'm like burying the settings down all my devices to like see if I can get this to show me what I want to just what I want what I want to see. But anyway, yeah, that's all. That's all I wanted to say about that. I just think it's a great idea. Glad to see it cool. happening. Apple's been doing a lot of pro-consumer things lately. They have. Other than the $549 headphones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Holden, where can everyone find you at when you're not on Network Podcast? Well, you cut out. I didn't hear what you said. Oh. I guess my closing out. So I guess I'll... Sorry about that. So Holden, where can everyone find you at when you're not here on Network Podcast? I thought you were saying that. I didn't want to assume and start talking about Respawning Fire, the other podcast you can find me at. Uh, it's a video game podcast where we talk about what we're playing as well as video game news and kind of do our own editorializing on that stuff. Um, it's every Sunday night at 8.30 um, p.m. Eastern Time. We stream on Twitch. And then that same episode is released on podcast services and YouTube Tuesday mornings at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. So, Holden... I think you, well, well, everyone know, Holden, you were downloading Cyberpunk 2077 and you had to yeah. put that on pause to get on the podcast. Mm. So I wish you a speedy download, right? Hope everything downloads very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully they were caching it at a server nearby and you can just kind of zip in and download it quickly. Uh, I have not bought the game yet, but I am going to buy it probably in the next couple of weeks because I'm almost done with... Um, I'm, I'm So I, oh wait, I figured out why GTA 5 why I had to start all over, started it kind of halfway through because my wife told me, she's like, oh yeah, I remember now I deleted the game because I wanted to go through and replay it and do the stock market missions again. I'm like, what? Do you know what I'm, do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I don't know those missions. I haven't gotten there yet. So, okay. I don't want to ruin it. So there's a part where, have you met Lester? Yo, oh yeah. Yeah. So, so when Lester tells you to go assassinate people, you go mm -hmm. into the stock market and buy the company before you assassinate them, and then the stock market goes up, and then your your shares go up. <laughs> so, because my wife, it, it, in her like in her career, she was a bankruptcy attorney before she's doing what she's doing. She's like all about getting money in games. That's all she wants to do is like <laughs> get all the money. I'm like, okay, let's do it again. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Hilarious. Oh, you, she does she play Animal Crossing? Because she she could play with the turnip market, or it's called the stock market. S T A L K, very yeah. clever name. So she didn't play Animal Crossing for that long. She uh, only plays it on my on my Switch, but uh, she does like the idea of of selling the uh, turnips for profit. She's like, "Yes, go, Mike." She reminds me, she's like, "Mike, you guys sell your turnips today? How's the how's the stock market doing?" I'm like, "It's it's fine, honey. Just I'll get it. It's fine." <laughs> There's a website called the Turnip Exchange where you can yes. find people who have extremely high um, turnip prices in their town. So you could just flip those turnips really fast. Nice. And I am, I, I am a, uh, I'll just say I'm, I'm very wealthy in animal crossing specifically because of that website. <laughs> turnip exchange. I'm going to look at that one. I use turnip.io or something like that to find out mm -hmm. what the, what the uh, predictive is going to be when I could sell it. But I should go look at that turnip. Oh yeah, it's, you'll go to places and they'll be like, "Oh, um, we're selling uh, turnips are being um, bought on my island for five hundred bells," and it's like, "Well, I got my turnips for you know ninety bells, so I'm gonna make three million bells by selling all the turnips I bought." Oh wow, I didn't even know about this. This is awesome. Oh yeah, you might have to wait. You basically have to wait in a line to get to their island, but they give you a dodo code so you can go to the airport, type in their dodo code, and then fly to their island, sell. Some people are kind of jerks about it, though, and they'll be like, in order to come to my island, you have to give me, like, you know, five Nook Miles tickets, or you have to give me this very specific rare piece of furniture that I want. Most Some people aren't that aggressive, but um, some people, you just ask for tips. So I'll usually drop them, like, 200,000 bells or something like that, because I made three million. Like, why wouldn't I give you some? Thank you. Oh, wow. I see this now. This is pretty cool. I'll have to look at that. Yeah, it's a good yes. site. Yeah, it is. 
Awesome. Your wife's going to make a lot of bells. <laughs> yeah, she is. She's like that. that. Right now, there's 999 people waiting. I'm like, okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, that ca- Wow. Uh, that must be for that's... all of them. The most I've waited is like 40 people in line ahead of me for one island. Oh, wow. Oh, you know what it is? I have these. I have so many. Uh, okay. I know what it is. Um, Holden, thank you very much for joining me today. I really appreciate you coming out, talking about all this cool Apple tech, and we will talk to you next time. Yeah, I'll see you next time on the show. Thanks, Holden.